There's a new global well-being survey out. Where does the UAE rank? I'm joined by Art Kozad from the authors of the report, Cigna Middle East, to find out. You're watching Inside AB, and my name is Jeremy Lawrence. Okay, Art, welcome to Inside AB. Uh, you guys me. authored the report. Can you first tell us a little bit about the background to this? Yeah, so this is the fourth year that we've conducted the report. It's a global report yep. uh, aimed at um, getting surveys to understand trends and expectations mm. around health and wellness across the world. Right. For this report, we've had over 14,000 respondents mm. in 23 countries around yeah. the world. Uh, the UAE was a particular concentration for us and something mm. that we went deep into. Okay, great. Um, so where does the UAE rank? Let's just get the top line figures on this compared to other countries. Sure. So the UAE ranks above the global average yeah. um, at 61.5 versus about a 61.2 on the index. I'll explain that uh, in a little bit. Uh, the good news is, and the interesting part is that it actually outranked uh, some of the other countries that typically do mm. well, such as the UK, France, and Singapore. Yeah, who I was just in Singapore. It's a fantastically modern country, of course. Yeah. So the UAE is obviously right up there. Absolutely. Uh, we took a look. So a little bit about the index. The index was looking at a number of different factors. We'd look at five. It talks about physical health, family situations, social connectivity, mm. um, work, and, and kind of the work pressures that mm. come along with that, uh, and as well as finance. So it really takes a good look at a holistic view, and that's what we try to capture through the survey. Right. Fantastic. Okay, so workplace wellness, that was a big part of the study. Uh, what did you find out with that? So as we went through the survey and, and we started to break down the results, one of the interesting points that came out was that um, there is a high demand here in the UAE, specifically mm. in Dubai, for workplace wellness. Right. Uh, in fact, what we found was that 80% of the respondents here in the Middle East, mm. specifically UAE, select wellness um, when, when picking a, a new employment, right? So right. wellness becomes a, a defining factor for them. Okay, and, so and I see it rises to 85% among millennials. Yeah, so we see that trend is going to continue to go up, we think, over time. Right, and yet you've got this, this dichotomy because uh, three and five say their employers don't give them a, a, any formal workplace wellness schemes. Good point, and this is where we see a gap here in the marketplace and something that we're working hard to educate uh, our other companies and corporates in the area that right. say there is a there is a definitive benefit by having these programs. Not only is it a demand mm. uh, and a differentiator uh, as an employer, mm. but the when you start to employ these, what you're seeing is greater engagement from your employees. Mm. You're seeing uh, reductions in absenteeism, right. presenteeism, um, and, and really just a, a, a better whole around lifestyle. Okay, great. Well, employers take note. Um, and what steps should companies take uh, with regards to this? I know the UAE government's got a happiness agenda. Absolutely, and so this, this dovetails very well. And I think that you know, clearly the government of, of the UAE with the happiness agenda has, has been a leader globally. Set the benchmark. Set yeah. the benchmark, absolutely. And so you know, this has been kind of on the tail of that. Mm. Uh, what we'd like to be able to see is, is just really more around how do we, how do we, can we integrate that within the workplace? Mm. So government's definitely doing their part mm. and then some, uh, but how can we get the corporate uh, community to start doing okay. this as well? I see we've got insurance packages that include mental wellness. Big piece, um, and, and I think it's gonna continue to get uh, more and more important. So stress, uh, external factors, those types of things that impact uh, the mental wellness of individuals. That has a direct impact, we, our view, on uh, productivity. Yeah, of course. So, so by, by addressing this and being part of that, we believe that organizations that do this not only improve productivity, but they reduce turnover, mm -hmm. particularly for high performers. In fact, um, somebody's more, four times more likely to leave an organization that doesn't have a wellness program or, or maintain these types of uh, standards such as mental, mental health, mm -hmm. um, four time, times likely to leave, uh, and that, that becomes a cost, wow. a direct cost. Of course, of course. Right, old age, the thorny issue of old age. Um, the report talks about this, and again, there was a dichotomy here because I see that half of the respondents foresaw that they will be financially independent in old age. Um, Three-fifths believe they will continue to live an active lifestyle physically and socially, but 20%, only 20% expect to have health insurance coverage in old age. The majority plan to dip into savings to finance their medical expenses, and 40%, 47% believe they'll be relying on their spouse or partner to take care of them. So you've got a real, uh, a real uh, division there between what people expect to have and 
the reality of that. Yeah, exactly, Jeremy. It, it's a disconnect, uh, mm. really, in terms of the realities and expectations as time goes on. I think, you know, um, this is, a, a, I think, a big problem, I think, for the community at large, society at large. Uh, from our perspective at Cigna, what we've tried to do to alleviate this is uh, we launched a, a product here in the Middle East mm. uh, for Dubai, tailored for Dubai, mm. really to address this. So it has a glo it's really globally mobile and it's got a tremendous amount of portability, mm. uh, but then it's, it's designed for the long term and it's Cigna Health Guard. Okay, okay. Um, interesting. And I also saw that the people in the UAE are more open to health data sharing than in other countries. Why was that? You know, it's an interesting question. I'm, uh, I'm unsure why. I think I think what we're seeing is people becoming a lot more comfortable over time mm. sharing data so long as, and I think this is the big piece here, so long as they're going to see direct benefit from this. So uh, what their expectations are, and I think it's, it's not... Um, it's not out of out of scope, which is, mm. can I see a better health outcome for myself by sharing mm. this data? Is this going to enable me to better manage cost? Will mm. it improve my access to care? Uh, of course, really importantly, is this going to help me detect illness and disease more mm. more more quickly so it can be addressed? So I think that that's the trade off, right? Mm. Uh, and ensuring that you know, of course, with this data sharing, that you know, we're working with organizations and like such as Cigna that put an incredibly high value and importance on data security mm. uh, and the areas that we do to ensure that you know, that type of information doesn't get out. Great. Finally, just going back to financial well-being, um, we mentioned there we were up there with the, the best of them, like the UK, France and Singapore. Mm. Uh, have you got any other stats on that, the financial well-being? Where, where do we rank there in terms of how we're feeling about our financial situations and our job security? So I think that the financial aspect of the, of the survey went, went quite well. I think people felt that they had a financial security dynamic that was, that was really well. I, I don't have the specifics on the mm. Singapore in comparison. Mm. At that level, we looked at it just ho more holistically. Mm. Um, but I think what we, when we drilled into the UAE, we found that people had a, a fairly stable, at least year on year, when mm. we compare it to 2017, a very stable uh, outlook with respect to their financial security. Okay, okay. So overall, a good year for the UAE. Overall, a good year for this. Clearly, some things that, that can be addressed. Mm. Um, and this is a big part of what Cigna is uh, aiming to do here in the region. Great. Well, Art Koza, thank you for running us through the report. Great. Um, do check out their website to find out more details. And thank you for watching Inside AB. Please do join us every weekday at 10 a.m. Subscribe, comment, and share as usual. Bye.